when I was diagnosed with progressive MS, I really thought my life was over. They tell you don't be around a lot of people, don't get stressed, don't increase your body temperature, you know, you have to, you know, keep your exercise to a minimum. And what I've found is, you know what? I'm not gonna give MS the power to affect my life like that. I'm gonna go forward anyway, because you know what? My diagnosis is not who I am. Who I am is an archer and an archery coach. That's who I am, and I have the power to determine that. Hi, my name is Leo Coriel. Um, today I'm here, I'm gonna to talk to you about what it's like to shoot archery from a wheelchair. I needed a wheelchair that has dump in it, which means my bottom side is lower than my knees, which puts me deep into my chair. You can also see I have really high welded frame on my wheelchair here, so I'm almost in a bucket when I sit here, so I'm stable. To control my spasms, I use body strapping. The first thing you're probably gonna see here is a thigh strap. It puts pressure on my thigh. I can't fall forward with this on me here. It also, my, my feet kind of spasm like that. A lot of people with spinal cord injuries, their feet or their legs will do that. This helps to stop that because it's hard to shoot a bow when your feet are you know, doing their own tap dance. So that, along with the strap so that I stay in the chair. And that is as much for letting down the bow as it is for pulling it back, because I'm not going anywhere. I probably <laughs> have adapted at least 15 different ways to, to use a mechanical release with my archery because my disease is progressive. So, you know, it started out being able to do things that I can't do anymore. When I started to lose hand function, I was having trouble hanging on to a release. It just kept flying out of my hand, so my friend, Christine made me a shooting glove. So this is just, I think it's a baseball glove or maybe a quarterback glove from, from Dick's Sporting Goods. And she cut out the fingers that I didn't need. This is just a piece of elastic, two holes, and there's a button here, which is actually from my winter coat. My release goes in my hand and it buttons and I never dropped a release again. This release is actually um, one made by Trueball and Matt Stutzman, and it's called the fingerless release. So this, instead of it being a finger or a thumb release, is set off by my chin. So that's a fingerless release. That is something that I hadn't thought about either. Currently, somebody made me this. So again, I don't drop my release, and I shoot a release that has a hole in it for my finger. So it's just simple, cheap, whatever works for you to use for a release. Bow hand weakness is another one. So I started out with a brace just like this, just like you would for carpal tunnel. And as it got worse, I ended up with a thumb brace, and this is my bow hand, like that. But then I didn't have contact with the bow because it's covered. So we went to a different style, and I adapted the grip on my bow with something called polyplastics. They're little plastic beads like you'd find inside of a beanbag chair. It's like Amazon, a thing like that for like 20 bucks. This is a quarter cup of beads. You put them in the water, it heats up. It's kind of like those mouth guards plastics, and I wrapped it around my bow. So that's the perfect grip. The other thing is this Subaru is amazing. It's moldable rubber glue. And once you get it where you want it, it solidifies, but it's it's not hard like this. It's got that rubber texture to it. And we put the sandpaper in the Subaru. Again, sensory feedback. What is that supposed to feel like? You know, if you can't feel your hands, you need, you need clues. Subaru is another one, and that sandpaper is, is a good one too. For the most part, my shooting process is the same as it is for anybody else. It's pretty standard. The muscle spasms make it necessary to have somebody to load my arrows, but I set up, anchor, release, and shoot the bow just like anybody else. 
I first tried archery at 48 years old, I wish people would have told me that it's not all about brute strength and uh, balance, that a lot of archery is right here. It's mental, you have to believe that you got this, because you do, because archery is very much a mental game. Practice, or even going to tournaments, can be very, a lesson in frustration. Um, just from getting your equipment into your car, from your car to whatever parking lot you need to be in, and to, then from the parking lot to where you're going to shoot in that, it can be very frustrating. So what I've learned is to ask for help, and when you're in a chair, that's the last thing you want to do. You want to be seen as independent and strong and, you know, I got this. And sometimes I do got this, but sometimes I don't and sometimes I need help. And even having the archer's agent, I actually have somebody that puts the arrow on my bow for me because I'm not fast enough to shoot it. And that was crushing. It was like, I don't want to do it then. But you know what? It's about other kids, other people watching. Hey, that lady. She uses somebody that loads her arrows for her. I can do that. If somebody loads my arrows for me, I can do that. And to have that responsibility, just show up, the power of presence, just be there and do what you do. So I encourage you, if you're even thinking about archery, to go ahead and try it. There are so many opportunities out there to be involved in the sport. Don't let the fact that you're in a wheelchair or have an impairment stop you, because I can guarantee you the archery community in the USA is incredibly inclusive. So if you have questions, you know, we have resources out there, we have phone numbers, we have a, a website. Give us a call, let us know what we can do to help you get started in the best sport in the world.